right, then we can start. All right, guys, yeah. But if you don't see me, you can go one row uh, higher. Yeah, if it, that's fine with you, that's all right. All right, guys. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the three month pre incubation program where we help you to get from idea to the first paying customers and help you to get from the initial concept of your business idea to the concept that's actually worth your while and worth making money and worth uh, investing your time. So I'm going to start with the just going, uh, giving a like short overview of what's going to be the three month pre incubation program. And then I'm going to go a little bit deeper in the main like philosophy of what we're going to do in these three months. And we will touch also to validation stuff in these lectures. And in the end of everything, in the end of this lecture, uh, you're going to have uh, idea pitching, idea pitching, uh, uh, let's say, activity where some of the people who have who are here and want want to join a team will be would be would be able to see you and maybe uh, introduce them as potential teammates uh, in your team. And yeah, so basically two parts. One is the lecture, and the second is uh, like idea presentations and maybe some new team member uh, team member uh, finding. All right. So this three month blockchain pre accelerator, pre incubator or pre accelerator consists of 12 lectures. The first one is uh, today and we start with uh, with taking business model canvas, filling it, understanding how to work with it, how to work uh, with it to get to the be to better uh, iterations of your business idea. Then we're going to move to some kind of specific themes like digital marketing, like fundraising, accounting, stuff like that. Uh, and in the end, in, in further on, you're going to also see how you can do validation, like what, how you can create minimum viable products, how you can get first sales with very little investment. And uh, in the end, we're going to finish with uh, a demo day, which is uh, your business idea presentation and the result present and the presentation of your results what you have done during this program and uh, I am Mikus Lassans. I'm uh, the head of University of Latvia business incubator We are a small team of four people who are helping young entrepreneurs start businesses here in our University of Latvia business incubator and uh, I was actually the person who started the, this business incubator like six or seven years ago uh, when I was studying in this university, uh, I worked on a project which was called Time for Business Board Game or Board Game Time for Business. And I was going all the time to the university and I was saying, hey guys, I need like a physical address, like where to, where to re register the company. I said, hey guys, I need premises where I can film my videos. Hey guys, I need the audience of, of all the students. I need this, I need that. Now all the time they answered me and they said, hey Mikus, I'm very sorry, but we can't help you because there is no, like, no, no way how a government organization like university can help entrepreneur because this is the basic, this is, because university is basically like uh, the, the ownership of the government, the ownership of the society. So we can't like spend money on some kind, of th some kind of third parties of companies. And they said, but if there would be a business incubator, we would be very, uh, very happy to help you. This would be the framework how we could would be able to help you. And they then then like uh, just just dropped me an idea that they said, hey, why don't you just create the business incubator? At that time, I wasn't interested in that at all because I was working on my board game, Time for Business. And I actually created the game, I produced it, I invested something around two years. That's not the best case scenario and I will tell you why. Invest two, not, not good to invest two years in the business idea and get sales only after those two, two years, but still, I did that. And uh, I produced 1,000 units of board games and I sold it uh, sold it in around one and a half year, 
which was basically one year with two Christmases. I sold all the units. After that, I saw that, hey, that board game industry is not very like big, not very growing. Uh, just imagine there was like thousand units. I sold it for 10, 10 euros each. So per year, I earned one, one uh, 10,000 euros, yeah. But then you have to take into account that that's the whole year of living. Uh, you have to take into account that, that there are expenses and uh, putting everything, all this together, I understood that the board game market is not, not as big as my ambition are. And then I, I understood that this is not the project that I, that I see my future in. And then I go, go, go back to the university and I said, hey guys, you mentioned about the business incubator and we don't have one. Uh, why don't I create the business incubator? And they said, all right. And, uh, and then this is how everything started. Uh, we had a small team at the university who created this, this business incubator. Then uh, I have also a small hobby business, uh, which is called Etsy Mini Accelerators. Hobby business is because it's uh, not asking too much, too much of my time, like actually very little, and uh, not generating too much of income, around, around uh, 15,000 to 20,000 euros per year. And that's why it's, it's, it's hobby business. And then I'm also part of a crypto police, which is a startup. That's a crypto startup, blockchain startup, uh, where we fight crime by using blockchain and by using the crowd. So every one of you can uh, report about scam and fraud when you see it online and get rewarded by tokens, by our tokens. And this is the startup that I'm part of. So basically right now I have three hats. I'm the head of University of Latvia Business Incubator. Uh, my, I, I'm also part of the Etsy Mini Accelerator, which is the hobby business. And I'm part of the startup Crypto Police. Um, and uh, I hope you didn't see that slide. But uh, I have one very clear message during this whole like, lecture, which is around one hour, one and a half hours. So the main message of this whole lecture and basically of everything what we're going to do this, this th through three months is, sorry guys, <laughs> your business idea sucks. <laughs> uh, but do you know what really sucks? spending a year working, a, working on an idea that sucks. I know it. I like invested two years in an idea that, that sort of sucks. Uh, but do you know what sucks even more? Money. Yes, you don't have money and you spend like savings and then you spend your parents money and then you spend lending and then you see that the idea sucks this is much worse uh, but the thing that i i would like to give you that suck the thing that sucks more is realizing that you that you could have predicted failure if you would simply validate the idea in the first few weeks and this is the idea of this three month business uh, free incubation where we help you to get to the first sales. And early idea validation allows entrepreneurs to fail fast, which means that they don't waste valuable time and unsu on unsuccessful ideas. So fail fast, see what's like working, realize that thing, iterate, see the next Next better idea, iterate again, see the next better idea, iterate again, till the point, till to the point when you see that, hey, this business model is really cooking, this is working, this is a thing that I want to realize. And this whole concept is basically everything what we're going to do. It's very simple, like, the idea is very simple, but the realization, it's, it, it's very tricky how to get to that point. And uh, I have seen like hundreds of ideas coming to, to, uh, coming to the business incubator. I have been in different kind of commissions and different kind of evaluations and everything, everything. I've seen so many business ideas. And this is the first main thing that uh, people don't understand. They think that business idea that, that, that they have in their minds 
is the, it, the, the obligation is to realize it. But the fact is that no, you have to find the idea that's actually selling, that's actually working, that's actually going to generate income and going to cre create a successful company. And this is the idea. And the idea of all this is based on basically three whales. I call it whale. So these three whales is lean startup or customer development, uh, like theory, then minimum viable product and business model canvas. And I will explain you what, what, what that is. So lean startups is a process when you develop your business ideas by iterations. So you have an idea, you build, build or create interviews, get feedback, you iterate to the better idea. Then you do it again, create minimum viable product, then you sell, you measure what's going on, then you make a decision what you're going to do for further, and then you continue the cycle till the point when you have found jackpot. And uh, this, this like lean startup methodology have come from basically Stanford. Uh, there is, a, there is a, a Stanford professor called Steel Blank. Steel Blank is one of the most influential people in, uh, in, in, businesses, in business all around the world. When, when Eric Ries, this guy, the Eric Ries, the, the younger guy, was studying to this guy, to Steve Blank, in the course, he was also developing his business, and, uh, and in this whole interaction, he created the Lean Startup methodology. And uh, this guy helped him, so, so in also in, a, in, in our program, you will have like your homework lectures or homework videos that you have to, you have to do. For example, you, we will give you like understanding of, basic understanding of what business model canvas is, but there will be lectures in the platform that you have to look, and the lectures are made by Steve Blank. And uh, there he's going to explain you how exactly to do the business model canvas, and then you, then you will do it. And uh, yeah, so you're also going to work with this guy, the steel blank, the father of, uh, the father of customer validation, the part, basically the father or the grandfather of Lean Startup. So this is the idea. You have an idea, you validate it, you create minimum wild product, you sell, you get, get some kind of data, you go back and you move in the cycles so as long as you need to get to the business business that's actually working. Second is minimum viable product that I already mentioned. Minimum, minimum viable product is the simplest thing that you can create uh, to test your business idea. Basically, that's the simplest thing what you can create to get first sales or to get like clients applying for your product. And I will give you examples afterwards. I actually did this minimum viable product thing with the mini Excel, Etsy mini accelerator that I have, that's that successful hobby business. And, uh, and I will tell you how it did, I do, did I do it. But this concept is everything. This minimum viable product concept is everything in business. If you're not using this minimum viable product concept, then most probably you're going to spend your year on the business idea that is not working. Of course, there are some exceptions, like, like there is Valmir Mujer's beer in Latvia, and, uh, and Valmir Mujer's beer guy who created this, this company, Igor Srundis, he was working with beer companies for 10 years. So he understood how everything was working. And uh, still he had extremely high struggles, but he created, he invested two million in the company and he, grew, he created extremely successful beer brand. But, uh, but still, like 95% of the whole companies that are created are, uh, uh, like, or be better to say, like 95% of the whole business ideas that are, that are like uh, coming out of the minds of people and, and going to some kind of like physical form, uh, they should be developed in, in, a sen in a lean startup sense, not directly like by blowing in like two million or something and creating a company. Sec and the third whale on, on which this concept is uh, created is business model canvas. 
That's basically one page business plan, which gives a photography of your business idea. And by photography, I mean, because your business idea is evaluating from the point when it's like the business idea plan A to the point when it's business idea plan F or Z or Y, which is actually very good business. So business model canvas basically like snapshots of your business ideas iteration. Uh, and I will show you two approaches, like one approach, which is, uh, which is like the old school business development, the way how I did it and the way how many people have done it uh, in a wrong way. Uh, and, uh, and, and then I will show you what's, 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 what's the right way uh, or like wrong and right is not the right word. I would say this way is, is not the wrong, but the more expensive and super risky way, which is not very smart. And the second way is going to be much simpler and faster. So I will give you an example. Um, and actually that this example is, is, is from, from my experience with one of the teams I have worked with. Uh, you have an idea in the beginning. Let's say this idea is Time Cafe. So Time Cafe's concept is when you are paying for time instead of muffins or tea or coffee. You don't sp spend money for tea or coffee, you spend money for time. And then you can drink as much coffee as you want or eat as much muffins or something as you like. So the concept is clear. This concept is working all around the world. And this is the beginning. Next thing is what you're doing, you're writing a business plan, which is a natural way how people think that the businesses should be created. You're writing a business plan, you're going to your par parents, you're going to your, to your, to your, you're going to your um, like friends, family, maybe to buy a bank. There is a bank in Latvia called Altum, and they're gi giving like up to 70,000 euros uh, for your business idea, basically. With very little, uh, with very little uh, like backing of the funding, and uh, you can get this money. This is very <coughs> available money. And so usually people create business plan. They go and raise money. They think about everything. So in this case, the time cafes guys they found the place. They found uh, like how much everything costs. They created a business plan. They created like profile of their of their potential audience, uh, who is going to go and buy. They, they figure out everything, like what exact, what kind of tea they're going to sell, where from they're going to, to buy the tea. They, they figure out where the muffins should be created. Should, should they hire a person who is, who is a cook who is creating those muffins? Like everything in very little detail, which is a way how usually people start businesses. And then it, it, it costs you around six months and uh, it, you need to raise around 20,000 to do this. You, you do that, then you need another six months, which is realization of your business plan, everything. So what you do, you hire those cooks, you hire those accountants, you ha hire those people who are standing in the, in the stand. Then you, then you uh, make the agreement with the, lead, with the landlord then you pay him the, the, the deposit and everything and you create ideal time cafe and it's super super ideal uh, and after three months well after like these 12 months there are three scenarios so one scenario this happy guy is that you are super successful everything goes as you expected everything is happening money is generating clients are coming like you think that you are king of the world, great. This is very realistic scenario as well. So for those 5% of people who start businesses, uh, like in the old school way, they have this scenario and they're super successful. Like the beer, like the Valmian, which is a beer brand that I mentioned, he had this success. And then there is another option. You are not a success with this business. You are losing money. Clients are not coming. Like for the time cafe, they picked, everything was fine. Like the products, the people who were working there, 
the machinery what they bought everything was super like as great as, uh, as, as you can imagine clients were coming but they were coming to in uh, like in very like very low numbers and they made one mistake and the mistake was that they, they rented a place in old Riga which is fine but in old Riga in a very little and narrow street which is very close to the main street and just nobody saw the time of there. nobody was coming in and I will show you there was like this was the main street every day in this main street there was like 20,000 people who were like I don't I don't know exactly how many but let's say 20,000 people they were walking here and the time cafe was rented here in this spot and this spot was rented the time cafe and this was the worst mistake he can uh, he can he can do and uh, the company failed the person took 23,000 euros from their parents he was unfortunate enough that they, their parents could lend him this money so he just lost all the money and uh, closed the time cafe sold out the equipment that he bought after after five months of working just burning money and uh, the result that the person is super depressed uh, he it's, it's, it's going to be very hard to start a new business after that super depressed his ideas and dreams are just crashed because everything what he planned in the in the business plan everything just was wrong by one little mistake that he created the time cafe in this in this small street maybe if he would do an ex experiment then he would see that hey maybe you should create a time cafe in a super in a super in a supermarket in a shopping center maybe not in Riga maybe in Moscow or maybe in uh, London so and then he failed so yeah so very bad story and the third option is even worse this is when when you are when you're having like a zombie business and zombie business is the, the kind uh, that you are generating money but not enough to pay salaries to your employees so you lay down you so you lay off you lay off the employees and you go work your own on yourself you just work yourself like 24 7 and you 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 can pay the loan out but but you can pay yourself like 500 euros per month or something that's that's it and you you are super depressed that that the money is not turning but but you can't quit because you have to pay the loan so you're in the level of uh, surviving and you're also not very happy so the only one good scenario is this one that you're successful but in this model in the previous in the old school model you have invested like 12 months and and you see the result you are successful or not successful and the smart way how to do it or faster way or more efficient way how to do it is by this you have the same idea it's time cafe what you do first of all you do interviews you understand the market you go and speak with people like how much do how much do they spend on coffee and, and tea why do they go exactly there you call to the customers in uh, in London you call to the customers in Berlin who are using this concept when you're talking with them and asking hey guys why you are going to this cafe time cafe instead of regular cafe what's the thing that drives you how do you find that you understand the clients then you eat then you then you then you improve your business idea then you go forward uh, when you see that this makes sense that the interviewers are saying you hey this makes sense actually you should move forward then you go to the next step which is minimum viable product. So you invest uh, very little money. Instead of 20,000, you invest like 300 euros. For Time Cafe example, you just find uh, a regular cafe. You just find a regular cafe and you say, hey guys, how much you're making in this week? And they will say, say well, 
a profit of 2000 or five like like 500 euros profit of 500 euros and you say all right i will take your cafe for two days i will pay you like 500 euros and you just you just give holidays to your employees just give me the room can you do that Yes, I can do that. All right, here you go, 500 euros. I will do my time, time to pay concept there. So this is one way how to do the minimum viable product. Also, we, the business incubator, have a sales stand in the shop, shopping center, uh, Riga Plaza. And, uh, and, and, and we have very good connections with the, with the management. So actually I offered the, the person, I said, hey, maybe you can create the minimum viable product of your time cafe in the shopping center. Uh, the person denied, he said, no, I will still have to invest money, so different mindset. Uh, but, but if you would create a testing stand in a sales center, shopping center, you would see the difference and you could have a different spots. So you create minimum viable product, let's say in this two day rented restaurant and you see how it goes, how you can get people. What happens next? You get the same result. So your business model is successful or non-successful or it's a zombie business. It's the same result after one or two months. And then what you do, you make a conclusion and you make a decision. Is this business model worth trying and moving forward or not? If it's worth, if you see that it's generating money enough that you need, then that you need for the business, then you move forward. If you see, if you see that something is not working, in a way that you were pl that that you should you should you would like to see, then you have to improve the idea and go again to the whole cycle. So this is a, a fast or a lean way how to develop your business idea. And I will give you very one very practical example, super practical example. So this is called Kronwald Kronwald Parks. It's uh, near here, around five minutes. Uh, five minutes walk or like 10 minutes walk from here uh, so you're are you are an architect right now so do you think that architect who has studied for 10 years who had built parks like who had built like five parks previously so he has experience he has created five parks previously and he has to create road where people are going to go. So if a person is coming from this street, how he can get to like this, like this street. So, and there is one, one bridge, yeah? So there is bridge and this is, this is, this, this is the, the place where he has to go. Do you think that that's a hard, that's a hard t uh, like uh, challenge to do? Like just to to create road that people can move around. Do you think that's hard or easy? Depends. It depends from what. Well, you see it. It's, it's, he, these are the obstacles. Here is Valdemar Street. Here is Kalpaka Boulevard. This is Kronwald Boulevard. Well, to create road, to imagine how people are going to move. It's not very hard because you see all the obstacles, you see everything, and you have created five parks in the previously. And what happens? Happens this. And you have seen this in so many parks. They're like, the road is going like this, 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 but somehow he has created, done a very small mistake or something, but there is a, there is a hole or something. And people are going like here. People are going to, through the, through the grass, and there is one more road created in the, in 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 in, in, uh, uh, in dirt. So, super simple example, super experienced person, like an architect with extreme with extreme uh, experience. What happens? The same thing. He can't create ideal product or ideal park where people are going to move the way how he has expected. And this is the idea or concept of, of creating a business idea into reality. That no matter how smart you are, 
no matter how experienced you are. Still, there will be so many circumstances that you can't predict and in the end, better way would be just put a grass on the ground, see how people are moving and then under that place just create a betonite. That's it. Cement. And this is, this is the, the idea of how you should start your business ideas. And uh, <coughs> how you can do it practically is with this business model canvas. So you take business model canvas as the snapshot of your business idea. You create the first version of your business idea by writing these things. Basically, there are two things which are important. Uh, like um, here, value proposition and customer segment. Value proposition is basically the value proposi proposition is basically like what you are selling, what values are clients buying, and the segment, who are buying that product. Uh, but you have to see on this, you have to see this business model canvas as the first iteration of your business idea. And uh, I know that in our business incubator right now, people who have applied, um, like many of you have already developed your business ideas, and uh, many of you have already, uh, already like uh, vision how you're realizing it, maybe a web page created, but still, you don't know, if you don't know the client, if you don't know exactly what the client thinks, then, uh, then you're going to fail in one way or another. So that's why you should start with this business model canvas and, uh, and, 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 and go to the like, business model canvas or plan B or plan C or plan D which is actually working and that makes sense. I will check the time if I'm, if I'm going with the time that I'm not taking too much uh, of your time as promised. Okay, very good. Uh, so, validation. Um, the way how you get from the, po from, from the plan A to the plan C or D, which is actually working, is by validation and uh, there are four types of validation that you can that you can do and it like quite easily and these four types are these so the first validation that you can do is market validation and it's to prove that sufficient that it's to prove that you have enough people like willing to pay a specific price that is going to like support your business, support your business growth in a way that the business needs. So market validation is to find that you have customers, that you have the right problem, that the customers, that the, the correct customer amount, they are enough and that they are willing to pay the price that you are offering them. And that the income which, gen which is generating through all this is enough that you can grow your business. And this is the, the concept of market validation. Then there is second thing that you can validate. It's product. That you can actually prove that the product can deliver uh, the work that, that you are promising. For example, most of the cases, like, like 90%, 85% of the cases, there will be, the most important thing is going to be market validation. But in like 10% of cases, there will be the most important pro like problem is going to be product validation. For example, like cancer. Everybody knows that cancer is the thing that people want to avoid, right? Like if you have cancer, like you're going to be able, to, you're going to be willing to pay a lot of money and your relatives are going to pay a lot of money. Like, uh, but if you come up with the idea, hey, I'm going to create a cure for cancer, then uh, most probably, you will have to prove that you can deliver the product that cures from the cancer or from the death. Like maybe, you, do you know that like, do you know that there are like, like hundreds of companies who are actually like looking for a ways how to fight death? Do you know that? Like who, who knows that there are companies like, like biohacking companies who are actually trying to hack death. Yeah, there are like two people. There are, and they're successful. They're, they're, they're going and looking into genetics, they're going to uh, like looking how you can like take your mind and put into virtual reality and live much longer. So they're like real companies doing that. Uh, and here the most important th thing will be validate the, validate the product that actually it can be created. 
Then there is competition. Uh, and you have to prove or validate that the product that you're trying to provide or wanting to provide is going to be, com uh, is going to be able to compete with uh, existing solutions, with, with competitors. The last thing is financial, that you can validate that the whole process, that the whole process is working in a way that you get profit, that the, the, the organization is working, yeah? Because like many people are saying that, hey, I don't need profit, I mean, uh, this is a social business or something, which is cool, but like no organization, no company can, can exist without profit and without income. So if you can't organize people, in some kind of if you if you want to organize people in some kind of direction people have to eat people have to like live and you have to have finance so you have to validate that the whole system that you're providing is going to generate income and is going to be going to self-sustain itself but we are going to concentrate on one validation which is the market validation yeah and uh, it also touches a little bit to the competition 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 validation and uh, this is what we're going to concentrate on the whole in these whole three months uh, and we are going to give you specific steps specific steps what you have to do to get to this point from plan a to a plan that's actually working uh, and how to validate the market is by doing interviews or doing minimum viable products yeah so interview or and minimum viable products uh, and interviews so I will tell you about like two approaches uh, that, and one approach which is one of them is very simple to act on right now so interviews are done basically in two steps one is validating the problem and second is validating the solution uh, yeah so Interviews are done in the, for these two segments, basically. Basically. That you have to validate that there is the audience and you have to validate the audience is the right one. Uh, and you have to validate that there is the problem and the need. When you have done that, you can validate the solution, the product. Uh, so to validate problem, you just have, you have to answer, do they care? Do they need solution? Do they have money for the solution? And in the end, who are they? So is there a problem and who is the audience? Who is the ex specific person? Like who is going to, uh, who has the problem? Who is going to buy your solution? And the second is validate the solution. So when you understand that there is the problem and you understand who is the customer, you have to validate that the solution that you are providing is actually working and it's actually going to be interesting for the people to exchange to existing alternatives. And the hard thing about doing interviews is to ask the right question. Uh, there are so many people who understand this wrong and are doing like surveys and they are doing bun like asking the wrong questions asking like hey do you are you look at my product like look at my look at my i don't know like this cup are you going to buy this cup i have quit my job i have invested two years of my time are you going to buy from me and of course the answer is yes and also is surveys there are so many answers like, hey, do you like my product? Yes. Are you going to buy it? Of course. Uh, but in the end, when it comes to buying, the person don't buy. And real statistics, I mentioned about the board game that I was developing in the beginning. I did this survey the wrong way. And I asked to the people, I said, hey, this board game, this concept, uh, you have to pay 20 euros for that. Are you going to buy it or not? Yes, no, I don't know. Like 70% of people said that yes, they're going to buy it. And many of those people who said yes, they're going to buy it, I knew personally. They were my friends. They were my, 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 they were my like uh, university course mates. And when I created the game, when I produced the game, I, I went to those guys and I said, hey guys, here is my game. Now it's time to buy. 
you said in the in the questionnaire that you're going to buy and I mean from those 70% only like 10% uh, bought and this is the problem of uh, and this is the problem of surveys and this is the problem of asking the wrong questions so instead of asking questions what you're going to do in the future if you're going to buy the product in the future you have to concentrate on the past what the person has done in the past in my board game example I had to ask question like are you buying board games yes or no if no then you're not my audience but you can ask a question uh, what was the last board game you bought and I did that afterwards and they said well the last board game was uh, this like katana for example I said, all right, why did you buy it? Well, I needed a gift for my friend, so I got in a shop and bought the board game. And it turned out, turns out that most of the people who were buying board games were buying because they needed to find the gift. And they're not, they're, they wasn't buying in, in for, for themselves. And there was a very small niche, which were board game players. It's an extremely small niche who are actually buying board games because they want to uh, play it on their own. And most of the people are buying board games because of, uh, they want to give gifts. And this is the, the right way how to ask questions, to ask about the past. You don't ask for opinions and, you, and also you don't ask, you don't assume that you think that, you, that, the, exi that the problem exists. Yeah. Even if I will say that uh, I will fight death, for example, I will fight death. I want that people don't die. Uh, and I will assume that the problem of people don't want, want, don't want to die exists. Uh, and then when you talk with people, well, you can't talk with people who died, right? Uh, in a legal way, for example, actually. Okay, so anyway, if you ask people this question, uh, and then you can move to, to a place when you see, hey, they're like, <laughs> it's not the general thing that people don't want to die. There are like very small person of people who want to live for forever, like extremely small. And uh, this is the need. And that's why, and that's why uh, you have to ask the questions the right way. You have, don't assume that the problem exists don't ask for opinions like opinion do you like my product will you buy it like what's your uh, opinion of i don't know how like kids are how kids are going to react on this ask for the future for the past uh, and the idea of doing interviews and the idea of doing interviews is basically this that you have to get to product market fit and product market fit is, uh, is basically when you align value proposition with the customer segment, which basically means that you have a product that you have a product that connects with specific audience. Yeah. And uh, can you please tell about your your business uh, your business idea? And I will Fine. yeah. Uh, so my a little a little louder only. So my business idea was to... Uh, maybe, I'm sorry, maybe you can come uh, in yeah. front of here because uh, there is camera and, and also people who are going to look online will see you. So, hey everyone, my name is Nikita. So my business idea was to digitalize interior design market. Uh, so we, we are... We have created like a template of the interior design, and uh, so we can integrate it into like a for, for each client. We can integrate to their place. So, is it? Did you get it? Yes. Yeah. Ask questions if you didn't get it. How do you make money out of it? So yeah, um, uh, our we have uh, like a three fixed prices. For the for the room, for the flat, and for the house, uh, instead of the square uh, paying for the square meters uh, for the simple designers. So the, for the flat, we have a price three hundred euros. 
for the house uh, 500 euros and for the room 100 euros. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so you have it here. What's the name of the idea? Uh, my flat. My flat. So, my flat is basically trying to, uh, trying to, like, fire interior designers. They want to just take the interior designers out of the equation and uh, create a tool that generates interior design online and do, does basically the interior designer work. And uh, the value proposition is creating an creating interior design that you like and creating interior design that you can buy furniture for and uh, creating interior design which is specifically for my flat. That's the value proposition, yeah? So interior design to my flat or to my house. And customer segments, that's more tricky. Like who is the customer? Like everybody who has a flat or everybody who are creating, doing a con construction to the flat or maybe interior designers are audience. There are so many possibilities and the product market fit is going to happen then when you will fit the solution, the existing, creating an interior design with a specific niche. Like specific niche could be, for example, my flat is for like young people like young people just outside, just out of the university, is their first job. They bought an extremely bad apartment. They don't have money for interior designers, but they want to use the interior design. They want to like experiment with what they're going to do. They're going to do the repair, re, like repairs on their by their self. So maybe this is the audience. This specific niche is the audience. Uh, and this is the product market fit. When you see the right audience and the right, and the right uh, value. For example, I mentioned about the Etsy Mini Accelerator that I have. So what I do with the Etsy Mini Accelerator is uh, I, take, um, I take basically a knowledge or a course of how you can get the first income in, on Etsy and I put it in one and a half month program which is taught by experienced Etsy sellers so the value proposition is learn like like value proposition is learn how you can make money on Etsy in 1.2 1, 1.5 months from most experienced Etsy sellers in Latvia this is the value proposition and the customer segment that I, I have found already is uh, women, like 23 to 50, 23 to 65 years old. Um, most probably, or the sweet, sweet spot of my audience is they are in their child leave. So they have their first, second or third child and they're in their child leave. They want to change something in their life, so they, they look at the Etsy. Maybe they can create a small business on Etsy. And uh, they are following Etsy already all for half year. They have friends who are selling on Etsy, and they see that this is working, and they also want to get this income. This is my audience. Basically, a woman in child leave who wants to change the, their career, concentrate maybe more on, uh, on, the, on their child for, for now. And uh, this is the audience. I can specifically say what they're thinking. And this is the product market fit. When you create product market fit, the business is rolling. It's going. It's just going. You don't have to push. The reason why it's a hobby business for me, because it's, uh, the niche is very small. The niche is very small. Basically, those 15, 20,000 euros per year is the maximum that you can generate in Latvia. Yeah. And internationally, I can't, create, I can't create competitive product because there are a lot of competition. Uh, 
I, that, I, that, I, I did that actually, so I saw that. So product market fit is Latvian women uh, and the product is rolling. When you see that you have product market fit, you will see that the product is rolling, everything is happening. Just, just fell in sleep. Just show, like how, how tired or, okay, okay, no, nobody, okay, you guys are sleeping, yeah. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, thanks. All right, so, um, then I'm going to move on. Yeah, feel free to. Uh, so I'm going to give you an overview of how to do interviews. This is also like a. A big lecture, but I'm not going to give you all uh, because this is part of the pre-incubation and uh, the whole pre-incubation, and it's it, it will take much more time than like three minutes. Uh, so, but I will give you the, the basic idea because there are like two ways how you can do interviews. You can do it fast or you can do it deep. And uh, and deep way how to do and, and 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 I suggest usually to do deep interviews because uh, then you can understand the problem in the beginning. When you do deep interviews, you understand the customer very, very well. Uh, so, what you do in the beginning, it's, uh, as, as I'm going to just give an overview. So, it, this, uh, this plan looks, like, looks a little bit like a gun, but uh, it's just a structure how you, how you do interviews. So, first of all, you create hypothesis. Hypothesis of the problem and of the audience, like uh, for like for the MyFlat, hypothesis of the problem is that, uh, or the need that people want to do flat renovation uh, by external help. They want to get help in finding the right interior. When you create hypothesis, like hypothesis of problem, hypothesis of audience, you create the interview structure, you define what you need to ask, to define if the hypothesis is right or not. Then you do the interview. First of all, you introduce people. So introduce with people and say hey. Say hey. Then you ask questions about their demo demographic like uh, traits. The, the ones that I just mentioned that uh, for Etsy and Accelerate, demographic traits are not going to be obligatory age or gender, but I will ask, uh, ask the person, my demographic traits will be, hey, uh, do you have a child? Like, are you pregnant? <laughs> like, are you pregnant? Uh, then I'm going to ask, like, uh, like, would you like to change, like, would you like a child? Would you like a child? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't have one, you would like to have one. Uh, if, if the person says no, then <laughs> she's not my audience. <laughs> But if it says yes, that she might be my audience, and I'm, go I'm going further. I'm saying, hey, hey, I'm saying, uh, like, what do you think about, about like, have you thought about, uh, have you thought about, like, doing extra income? Have you thought about changing your career? Like, like things like these, like, what, what, like, I mean, maybe, where do you live, <laughs> where do you live? Where, what's your phone number? Demographic questions, yeah, naturally. Then when you understand the, the demographic questions, the person, like, uh, then you move, move forward and you ask uh, questions about their problems. Like, uh, you have defined the problems in the business model canvas. When you, you ask questions to analyze what kind of, like, are the problems, like, a accurate? For example, in the business model canvas, you have to define three problems. You define three problems, and then you name the problems in front of the person, and you say, hey, please take these problems and put in a, in a sequence that m it's most relevant to less relevant. They do that, and then you go further. You go to the next level, which is 
that you dig deeper and ask questions like, hey, you mentioned that you have this problem. You mentioned that you have this pr problem of, of uh, finding the right interior or for the flat. So you can ask this question also to people who have done al already the, the apartment repairs. You can ask, did you had in the past, yeah? Did you had the problem of doing uh, interior rep repairs? The person says yes or no. Uh, and, but, 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 but the person says yes because he already showed that the first problem is finding the right interior designer. And then I will ask, hey, can you please explain me what did you do when you had this problem? And the person will answer. Then I will ask another question to go deeper and I will say, hey, uh, so you mentioned that you, 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 you did this. So what was the result? What, what kind of interior design did you f designer did you find? Why do you choose this designer? What was the problems with the designer or everything? So this is the way how you go deeper and ask more questions to understand the person. Then when you have understood if the problem exists, there are two ways how you can do. You can do problem interviews or, or the sol solution interviews. The pro problem and solution interviews to the point when you understand the, the when you to the point when you under when you go and in understanding the person deeply uh, is the same. But then uh, in uh, solution interviews, you or in the product interviews, you demonstrate your product and you say, hey, you mentioned that uh, you had problems uh, in finding the right design for your flat. Look, my solution is this. Then you can pick from those hundred designs. Like, please pick one. The person picks one. And then I, then I generate the result. I say, hey, is this sufficient? Like, is this what you need? And the person will answer. And this is how you evaluate if you solve the problem. If the person says yes, this is exactly what, where, what I need. Please show me where I can buy the products. Then you see, okay, this solution is solving the problem. If the person says, well, it's nice, but I don't like the place of the furniture here. I don't like the place of the sink. I want to change it. And then you, then you see, hey, I can't change it, my solution. So maybe I'm not solving the problem right now. I have to improve the solution. In the, in the problem interviews, you have finished the interview when you go deeper into the into the person's mindset then you can finish the interview by asking questions like hey uh like can i can i call you again when the product is going to be ready and when when person says okay or not uh then you can move fo move forward and write down everything what you have learned yeah you write down everything what you have learned and then in the end you understand that the pro that the pro you understand that the business, that the interviews are over, uh, when, when, you, um, when you basically know what the person is going to answer you. When you're asking questions and you know that the person is going to answer you this, then you know that the interviews are over. So these are the long interviews. But there is a simple way to do that as well. A simple way, but more, but more like more like a surface way how to do that and this is with validation board and this is what i am in, in encourage you to actually do so the next the next uh lecture or or the next event which we're, which we're going to have in the pre-incubation is going to be next week uh, also on thursday also at four o'clock so if you choose to join to the three month pre incubation, then I suggest that you, uh, that you take this validation board and uh, try to get to the better iterations of your product. And I will not explain you how to do that. I will show you a video. And the reason why I'm showing you the validation board is because you can also go and find this on internet by just writing validation board and watch it on yourself you, if you won't understand. But now I will demonstrate the video. The validation board is a tool that will help you track your progress and focus on what really matters for your new product or business idea. So let's take a look at the validation board. On the top, we have an area where you're gonna track your pivots over time. 
So in Lean Startup, we redefine runway as the amount of pivots a startup can still make. Almost any successful startup that you can think of has had a major pivot over the course of its history. Think about YouTube, it started as an online dating site. Think about Groupon, it started as a site for collective action. And even Instagram was a location-based social network. In the bottom left is where we're gonna design an experiment. So we're redefining a product as an experiment where the goal is actually to learn about customers. In the bottom right, we're helping you measure your progress by learning. And in a lean startup, it doesn't matter how many lines of code you have or how much revenue you have, it just matters how quickly you can learn. So we're redefining productivity. So the first step is defining your core hypotheses. This is the customer, the problem, and the solution. We're defining the customer as a group of people with a common pain, and it's in descriptive terms. So it's not traditional demographics that you might think of. The problem is the specific problem that this customer group has. It has nothing to do with the societal problem at large, but you actually want to define it within the way that they would describe it to you if you were having a conversation. Finally, initially, we're not gonna actually define the solution because every problem actually has multiple solutions. And if you start with a solution, you may be missing another solution that would be an even better opportunity to solve that problem. After you've defined your core hypotheses, you're gonna design an experiment. Ask yourself, what do I need to learn? We start by defining our core assumptions. This is anything that could be a fact that we believe where if it's invalidated, it would cause the business to fail. So think that you have several core assumptions and you're gonna pick the one that is the riskiest. We define the single riskiest one because we only need to prove one of these wrong in order to invalidate the whole business. Now that you have your riskiest assumption, you need to ask yourself, what experiment should I build in order to get this learning? So we have three methods of experimentation that all increase in the cost of, of testing. The first type is exploration. This is going far and wide, doing customer interviews, looking for problems, trying to find pain points, and you're gonna use exploration to drill into the second method, which we call pitch. Pitch is actually asking your customer for some form of currency in exchange for solving a specific problem or for a specific solution. So currency we define as email addresses, cash, anything that your customer is giving up. The final method is concierge. This is actually delivering on the pitch with as little technology as possible to as few customers as you can until they are really, really excited and happy with your service. So each, each of these three methods increase in the cost of testing and they're all key to do in order before you actually write any code or build any infrastructure in your business. So now that you have the method, it's time to define the minimum success criterion. This is basically asking yourself, how do I know if my experiment is successful? So you're gonna decide on what is the minimum amount of validation that you need to continue working on this product. So as a team, with, with everyone and all your stakeholders involved, decide on the minimum amount of validation from customers from getting out of the building that you need to continue working on this. Then it's time to get out of the building and experiment with customers. Now that you've collected data from real customers, it's time to decide if you've met your minimum success criterion. If not, the hypothesis, the riskiest assumption, is invalidated and it's time to figure out a pivot by pivoting one of your core hypotheses. If you've met it, it's validated and then you're actually going to brainstorm the next riskiest assumption and do a test on that. So now I'd like to give you in the next video a real case study about how I've used the validation board to save myself six months of time. About four years ago, I started a company called Campus Bike. And I spent three months uh, building a website and actually sourcing a product from China, getting it manufactured, getting it shipped all the way to Ames, Iowa. I spent a lot of time on the website. I was a website designer. I like, built custom e-commerce software. I spent at least a week like, finding the background, at least a week designing the copy in the bottom left. And at the end of the day, I only sold one scooter out of like $10,000 worth of scooters that I bought. And I spent the next three months um, like driving the scooters all around my college campus, like one in front of the engineering building, one from the gym, and like put a new sign on it every day, like call me, oh no, like buy now, like just trying everything I could to get them to, to sell more scooters. And no matter what I could do, in six months I, I couldn't get it to work. Um, I called it a day 
And you know, the whole time I kind of thought I was like one step away from being successful, but I just wasn't good enough of a salesman, or you know, I didn't know how to run a business, or like my friends that were working with me weren't committed enough, and I was blaming all these other things for my failure, but not really realizing the problem was the product in the first place. Recently, I actually tried to restart this business because I really wanted to learn how the methodology could change my approach. And using the validation board, I actually learned more in one day than I accomplished an entire six months of running the business prior. And so I started off by defining my customer and problem hypotheses. My customer are people that are actually in the market for Vespa. And so I figured Vespa is, is the market leader. They make $8 billion in revenue a year. Huge company, huge success. And I was actually living in New York at the time, so I've, I've seen them all over the place. And the problem that I was trying to solve was that Vespas are gas powered and it's bad for the environment. So the scooters I was importing from China were actually electric scooters. So I defined some of my core assumptions, um, being that my customer cared about the environment, they cared about price because mine were cheaper, and they cared about uh, the utility of just getting around with the scooter. So I decided on my riskiest assumption. My riskiest assumption was that my customer cared about the environment did the exploration method and we defined our minimum success criterion as one in 20 just admitting that they have this problem. So what do we do? We threw up a Craigslist ad and I just took about 20 minutes. I took the photo from another Craigslist ad and put it on my Craigslist ad. I changed the price to be significantly lower so that more people would call us and we posted that online. Every 20 minutes my phone started to ring and people were calling me and when, they, when, when I pick up the phone I go, hey, you know, how's it going? And I'd, I'd say, well, what, what, why are you buying a scooter? And they'd be like, oh, you know, I used to study abroad in Italy and like I had a really good time there and I rode a Vespa there so now I want to get one. Another guy would be like, my wife has one and she's always riding it and I feel left out so I want to get one. And Nobody mentioned um, any concern for the environment. I actually asked people point blank, like, out of 20 people I said, you know, do you care about the environment? And no, every people were just like, no. <laughs> you know, telling a stranger on the phone, no, I don't care about the environment. One person went so far as to say, and I'll never forget this, all I want to do is wear a skinny tie and ride a Vespa. And that, that threw me for a loop, and that, I never expected that. And it kind of shocked me. And, and it caused me to realize that, hey, people are actually interested in the lifestyle element of owning a vest, but it has nothing to do with the concern for the environment. So, you know, actually after the call, I apologized to people because I obviously was a fake ad and I didn't have a Vespa, and so I was like, hey, I'm so sorry for wasting your five minutes, but I don't have a Vespa, and I was actually running an experiment to test my business. And people were just like, okay, it's cool. Talk to you later, I'm gonna call someone else. And it was weird because I hope I expected people to be angry with me, but the truth is that we're so bored every day that when something weird happens to us, we actually really enjoy it, and we we actually um, are glad that, that happened to us, and that we are thrown out of our normal state of being. And so, you know, people are like, "Oh, it's cool!" Like, and I'm going to go tell my wife what happened. Um, so that whole experiment, talking to 20 people, um, posting the Craigslist ad only took 24 hours and out of 20 people it was a clear signal that no one cared about the environment and I, and I spent six months trying to push that business and it couldn't have been more clear if I just ran that experiment. But after that risky assumption was invalidated we didn't stop there. We spent the next day trying to figure out something that would really work. So we pivoted and we redefined our customer problem and solution hypotheses. That um, we noticed by going around the city that there were scooters parked sort of on the, on the avenues and the edges of Manhattan because to, to get to that area for work, it's actually kind of difficult. There's not really good subway access, good bus access. So it makes sense that if you work on the edges of Manhattan, you would buy a scooter to get to work. But we also noticed that there were people that lived in areas where they, that worked in areas where they had difficult commute, but they didn't own a Vespa. So we thought, hey, that's kind of weird. You know, why don't they just get a Vespa? It'd be really, really easy for them to get around and it'd be useful for them. So to find our customers, people that don't yet have a Vespa, but have a difficult commute. And the problem we defined as um, they actually didn't have knowledge of a Vespa because, because we talked to a lot of people and they said, the reason I'm getting a Vespa is because I have a friend that has one. So they had that existing knowledge. We assumed that these people had never maybe ridden one, maybe they didn't know. This is enough to understand the concept. If you're going to do these interviews with validation board, then I encourage you to watch it again and watch more videos like examples from other people. There are in very interesting examples of, uh, of uh, like for example, medicine, which saves you from uh, the Asian glow.
like Asian people when they drink alcohol many of them have problems that they become red and uh, that's called Asian glow and uh, there is this example for example also and uh, so I encourage you to do interviews uh, till the next first uh, event that we're going to have uh, but even if you're not going to do interviews till next next uh, next event you still will have to do that afterwards so the next is going to be about business model canvas and if you do interviews after that that's also fine uh, so this is about interviews and then I will give you a very short uh, ex like explanation what is venerable bio product with examples so when you interview is the cheapest way how you can evaluate your idea and that's, that's, actually, that's, actually, that's actually also a better way how to evaluate your idea to understand the people and the problem and everything uh, so that makes you much more smarter than just doing a minimum viable product but the cases depends so you can do minimum viable product also in the beginning but, uh, but I can encourage you to start with the interviews but still when you finish with the interviews and you think that hey this business model this business model like makes sense then uh, then you can continue with the minimum viable product a minimum viable product is for example a landing page where you buy Facebook ads or Google ads and you drive people to the landing page or it's a video demonstration and subscription like like you demonstrate also landing page you send people to the video and you say hey if you want this product please subscribe or you create a physical product which is a simple version of your global product you sell that or you create a video and go to Kickstarter so Kickstarter is a crowdfunding come a crowdfunding site where you create video and you get sales before the product is ready you can do that as minimum viable product uh, you can create an introductory lecture which I did with the mini accelerator you can create a fake advertisement as uh, as, uh, as this guy just mentioned that they created a fake advertisement uh, in the ads and then you can do anything else anything else but they can help you to get to real purchases to real customers or in the worst case the real like clients who are subscribing to your product and saying hey I want to buy when it's going to be ready I will, I will give you a few quick quick examples so this is buffer buffer is uh, is a tool that helps you to manage different kind of social media accounts so you can you can paste uh, like one poll one with a one click you can paste to like many social media accounts uh, plus you can also like uh, put time time when when the post should be made so any a quite cool tool uh, anyway they st they started with a minimum viable product what they did they just created a landing page and the landing page looked like this so the first step is this one they send the audience to the landing page there were three three steps like choose time to tweet add tweets your but buffer buffer does the rest next one button plans and pricing so if you have catch the right audience if the audience has interest he will click the person will click, click the button next step is this one so free plan standard plan max plan just an experiment these are the experimenting prizes what you do you see the statistics where people are clicking are people going away they see the price they disappear or are they clicking and where they are clicking and how much how many people are clicking on those things when they click that means that they actually consider buying right when they click they go to the third step by saying hey thank you for considering uh, buying but please leave your email here we're going to send you invitation when the project the project is going to be ready buffer right now is a multi-billion multi-billion worth of company started with minimum viable product uh, Etsy mini accelerator what I did is that I had also a hypothesis that people would like to uh, start business on Etsy but the question like is how many people so what I did is I just created an open lecture and uh, put on Facebook so and I was like I was like sur so surprised that, that 1,400 people applied 
like 1,400 people applied to the open lecture. The name of the lecture was how to make money on Etsy. 1,400. At that point, I knew, all right, this is something. When uh, the lecture finished, my minimum viable product was this one. This one. Just a Google form. And I'm not joking around. I invest like, like 30 minutes to create this. Like seriously. This was my minimum viable product. I, 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 I invested like maybe two hours or three hours to get the lecture ready. I, I, I invested 20 minutes to create this form and click send to the whole 1,400 people by saying, hey guys, there is this mini accelerator concept. If you want to participate, apply and I will send you uh, an invoice to pay a portion of the money that you have to pay there. And I, have, I got something like 20 people who applied, who paid, and I, I knew that. I knew at that point that yes, this is going to work. And this is how everything started there. Um, and a Dropbox example. Raise your hands who don't know what is Dropbox, if I should explain. Okay. Uh, Dropbox is uh, basically a folder in your computer that is synchronizing with other computers. Like you have Dropbox on your or on your uh, on your like PC. Uh, you put files in there. It synchronizes with your Mac or with your phone. So and if you're if, if someone stole your computers or they die, then you don't lose your files. So Dropbox is a cool concept. Uh, it was actually working also before, but they started with the just the video demonstration and the video demonstration looked like this. Okay, my name's Drew, and I'll be showing you a quick tour of Dropbox, which is a new way to store and share files online. What makes Dropbox different is that it just works, and there isn't any complicated setup or interface to learn. So let's get started. I've already installed Dropbox on a Windows PC and put a bunch of files in, and now I want to sync these files to my Mac. So to do that, I just installed Dropbox, and now I'm linking my Mac to my account. So in a second, my account will be linked, and you can see that the files that were on my Windows PC will start coming down. And what we're looking at is my Dropbox folder, which looks and acts like any other folder except for two things. One, these little green icons that indicate files are up to date. And two, anything in my Dropbox is synced across all of my computers into the web. And you'll notice that when I make changes, uh, everything syncs up pretty quickly. And as another example, I'm going to log in my Windows PC where you'll see that not only are the changes from my Mac already here, but if I make another change to a file, so for example, this picture of a platypus, and then I hit save, uh, the change begins uploading immediately. And when I go back to my Mac, uh, the change is reflected in a matter of seconds. So the point is, if you've ever worked with multiple computers or carried around a USB drive or emailed yourself files from work, you can see this is a much easier way of managing your stuff. And we also protect you from the bad things that can happen to your files. So if I delete a bunch of stuff, we have this web interface where you can not only get to your files in case you're not at one of your computers. So here are the contents of my Dropbox here. Uh, but we have this. So this was the actual video which Drew, the owner of the company or the creator of the company, sent uh, to different kind of uh, like forums and groups and it became viral. And uh, he got basically overnight 75,000 people who applied to get Dropbox. Previously, he had like 5,000 people who, apply, who, were apply, who applied. After this video, he got 75,000 people who applied to Dropbox. Is that a validation or not? Of course, it's a validation, 75,000. Who, who are really willing to be the first one who will get Dropbox. And this is also a multi-billion worth company. So, and they started with minimum viable product. Uh, and the last uh, example of a, min a minimum viable product is Zappos. And Zappos, they, they wanted to, sh the, the guy wanted to sell shoes online uh, and this was in the beginning of internet basically when what he did is he didn't have like money to buy inventory of shoes 
Uh, and what he did is he got to a local shoe store. He took photographies of existing shoes in, uh, in that store and put online. And it literally looked like this. Uh, and, uh, and when he got the order on the, on, the, on the internet, he got to the shoe store, he bought the shoes and he sent it through mail. And, uh, and after a while, the turnover and everything like tur like like uh, rise he managed to get of course investment because he had sales and in the end he sold the company to to amazon also for multi-billion like mul that was also a multi-billion dollar deal so and he started with minimum wild prep yeah so this is about it about the minimum wild product and the question is for you to think is what is going to be your minimum wild product. Yeah, so thank you very much uh, like for being here, for coming here. Now I'm going to wrap up everything and remind you what's going to happen in the three month pre-incubation uh, pre -incubation process. So we are here in the introductory lecture right now and uh, I told you about like the concept of validation and the concept of what we're going to do in a three month period. So the thing that we have, we have knowledge and understanding of how to create startups. We have an understanding of how to start businesses, how to realize your business idea. We have gone through like years and years. Myself, I have uh, 10 years experience in business or even more right now. Uh, and the people we're inviting, they have, they're very experienced entrepreneurs that are, that are giving lectures and very, very strong people. And uh, we, put the, we, we took this knowledge and we put in this three month period to help you to get from the point when you have idea to the first sales. And, uh, and we think that this is the way how we can help you to start business in a much more wise way and start business that are already successful, that are successful. Uh, also, maybe during the process you see that business is not for you. Maybe during the process you see that, hey, this is, this is not my priority or this is not interesting. So you can jump out. But still, uh, but still, this is the best way how to start businesses. And this is the way how people all around the world are doing that. And we know how to do that. So we can put everything this in the three month period. So, yeah the introductory lecture. Then next week, we're going to have the business model canvas. Uh, we're going to, you, the homework is going to be to create the first, first business model canvas. And then to the lecture, there will be a workshop where a person is going to tell you again, what's the minimum business model canvas. And then you're going to present and he is going to help you to, to get to, to create it, to do it right. Uh, then the, the next is going to be that you're going to do the interviews here from this till, till from the second week to the third week you're going to do interviews and uh, and create hopefully next level of uh, business model canvas or next iteration then we will go deeper to the customer segments value proposition the customer journey the thing that i would i described you in the beginning like customer journey is that you understand the client you can basically tell what are the steps uh, that clients are doing starting from the problem that they, they, they feel inside till the point when they buy the product and solve the problem. Uh, then uh, we're going to do uh, one more like uh, meeting when you're going to give feedback about the interviews that, that, that you had and show the next iteration. Then there will be digital marketing, feedback night. Feedback night is when we invite a bunch of entrepreneurs uh, and experts and you have speed dating with them so every 15 minutes you're changing to the next person meeting another mentor and the mentor is giving feedback about your business idea giving contacts helping you to helping you in this 15 minute minute period so that's the the feedback night then team building event in christmas of course uh mvp and validation so then again i'm going to tell about uh the mvp is like my writing course so i will I will tell you how you can build MVP and we're going to go through exactly your case, how you can do that. Uh, then uh, how to create your, I don't know what's the same. There is some kind of mistake. Anyway, uh, then there is another feedback night with speed dating and meeting with mentors about legal aspects, accounting and financing. 
uh, then there is pitching workshop and in the end we finish with demo day when you present what you have done basically in this point we expect that you had already first clients already first sales uh, that you already in the best case scenario and that in the end this is what we expect so everything what we're doing this three month is basically with uh, one goal to validate your business idea to get to the first from the from the your first uh, business concept to the concept that's going to make money and uh, create a great company and yeah that in the end you have first income uh yeah so also when you join you will be part of a of an online course uh, which is called Unicorn Labs. Uh, this is not the screenshot of the course, this was the previous year's screenshot, now we have new platform, but uh, it's not ready yet, so I didn't put that screenshot. But still, you're going to have online course. And uh, yeah, so if you want to join to the three month pre incubation uh, period, uh, three, three month pre incubation uh, program, you have to go to this link and register um, and uh, uh, and the, the participation of this uh, three month incubation is for uh, for a symbolic money which is 50 euro donation for this three month period uh, basically all the stuff is covered by our patrons so we have around 100 people and companies who are invest who have invested their personal money to cover all the business incubator and everything and the grants and everything what we're doing so they're paying for that uh, most of the most of the most of the funding is coming from the patrons like around 70 percent uh, and uh, the reason why we put put this 50 euro donation is because of like two reasons first reason is that uh, this is the first filter that filters out people who actually want, who really want to, to, to build a business. So, very good. Uh, so this is uh, the sound for which I live for the whole month. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Uh, so, so 50 euros is uh, the money that we're asking. And the, there are two reasons. First reason is that this is the way how we, how we, uh, make the first filter that apply people who actually want to do that uh, previously we had free participation and we saw that there are like 70 people who start in the beginning or even 100 we had one year and in the end there are like 20 people or five people and we are paying actually to the lectures and people just don't appear so we thought that this is not going to work uh, and uh, yeah so we put this because of the first filter and the second reason and the second reason is that uh, business incubator is supported by uh, successful entrepreneurs and we are helping you because we're expecting that you're going to become successful entrepreneurs so this is the way how we show that when you're going to be successful entrepreneurs uh, we hope that you're going to give back by also becoming the patrons of university of latvia student business incubator and this is the first step so yeah so this is first call to action.